In this episode, I'm going to share with you the secret recipe to catching more fish in winter on the small stuff. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're keeping safe and well. If you are a returning subscriber, it's good to see your face again. If you are new here, my name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if you'd like to learn more, please press that red subscribe button and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, I'm gonna start this off by telling you something that I have learned through my own mistakes. You will catch more fish across the whole of winter fishing, the nasty stuff like lures, worms, eggs, all that kind of stuff, more so than you will with naturals. But if you're given the right conditions and on its day, naturals will completely destroy those methods. So in understanding whether you should be fishing the bung, the lures, the nasty stuff over the natural stuff, I think that there are three key areas that you need to hone in on and understand to get the most out of that method. And starting with number one, number one is conditions. Now you've heard me say before, and I can't stress it enough, that conditions always determine what you fish. If you're fishing in a 30 mile per hour wind, and it's pissing down with rain, and the water's colored, more than likely or not, you're not going to be fishing nymphs or buzzers. The reason for that is, in a heavy wind like that, you won't be able to maintain the right level of control with the flies and the fly line if you've got a heavy wind. So in that instance, when you've got a combination of heavy rain, heavy wind, and colored water, you're doing yourself more harm than good in trying to catch a fish on those methods. So putting that aside, then what are the right methods to be fishing naturals in winter? Well, you're going to be looking at certain patterns. So for example, a flat calm or a moderate wind is perfect. A bright sun or sun with intermittent cloud is also perfect. If you've got temperature which starts off low in the morning and then it gradually increases by just a few degrees as the day goes on, then again, that is perfect. All of those three factors line in to say, right, for me, this is a good day to be trying buzzers or nymphs because the conditions, the temperatures, they all suit the factors that you need to get a hatch to happen. Number two is time of day. Normally in December, January, February in the UK, it's normally minus temperatures in the evenings or it's just hovering around freezing. So with that in mind, do you think that the temperature would have increased enough by say 8 a.m. in the morning to invoke a hatch? Sometimes it would, but more often than not, it wouldn't. But your aim, obviously, is just to see a temperature gauge which increases as the day goes on. There's no point you fishing the beautiful nymphs and buzzers at 8 a.m. in the morning if the hatch only begins at 12 p.m. and finishes at 12.30. So keeping that time of day in your mind, you want to really think about the fact that, okay, I may only have a hatch from 12 until 2, for example, and that is where I need to focus my time in fishing the this method properly and the temperature may drop off by half past two and that is it for your hatch all day and then moving on to number three food what food is there available for the trout at your fishery right now and some people often forget that in winter trout will feed on shrimp they'll feed on snails they'll feed on fry they'll even feed on a dead trout carcass that hasn't made it through winter and is rotting away so with all of those foods to consider you've also got to consider that the main diet of a trout even in winter is midge or buzzer pupae so with that in mind let's go through three methods that i think you can use tomorrow that will catch you fish in winter so a good starting point is a floating line a 12 foot six pound fluorocarbon leader and then just one fly and that is going to be a bloodworm imitation now i'm not talking about a red apps or a brandlin i'm talking about a fly that represents an actual bloodworm they are the initial larva stage of a midge pupae in the lake bed the trout at some point in the day will hone in on that food source and try to exploit it so that is why you as an angler need to match the hatch so the way you're gonna approach this is very simple. You're gonna fish that long leader, you're gonna cast the fly out, and then you're just gonna fish it back very, very, very slowly. Slow is the aim of the game here. And the more you can keep it close to the lake bed, the more your chances of success will increase. 
and the takes on a bloodworm in winter can be the most gentlest of takes you'll ever see. It might just be a little twitch on the fly line or the line might just gradually pull away as you're fishing it. So be ready for that and always gently lift into the fish to set the hook. Okay, so number two, now we're trying to cover the whole water column. So for me, that means still sticking with a floating line. And I'm gonna fish three flies at six foot intervals. So that's six, 12 and 18 on a seven pound fluorocarbon leader. In winter, if there is a hatch of midge or buzzer, it's normally going to be black and it's normally going to be very small. So the point fly will act as a fish catcher but also a sacrificial fly. It'll normally be a size 10 black buzzer with a strip quill body. Then up the cast, I'm gonna fish either two small black buzzers that are size 14s or I'm gonna fish one small size 14 black buzzer and one small size 14 Dialbach. And the aim of this cast is to imitate all of the midge pupae that's ascending throughout the water column. The reason why I fish a Dialbach on the top dropper is also as a suggestive nymph. So that might be representing anything, anything that's possibly in the water, like a snail or a shrimp, as well as an emerging buzzer. And just like summer, your aim here is to fish this back as natural and as slowly as possible. You've got to remember that in winter, these fish are lethargic. They're gonna pick up and pick off things that are nearby and the more natural and delicate your presentation is in fishing this method, the more success you will get. Okay, and then number three. So when I thought about this, I thought long and hard about whether dry fly should be method number three. And then I thought to myself, do I catch more fish fishing subsurface or on the surface in winter? And the short and simple answer is, you catch a lot more fish subsurface. So method number three looks to encompass something that is in the middle, and that is fishing cormorants on a washing line. Now, some people will say, well, a cormorant isn't anything natural. It represents a small lure. I think there's an argument to say that a cormorant can represent a buzzer, especially if they're tied very slim, very sparse, and fished very, very slowly. Now you can fish this straight, or you can fish it as a washing line. So that means fishing a sink tip, like a Rio midge tip or an airflow slow tip. You're fishing a 15 foot leader with flies spaced five foot apart. Now your two droppers are going to be cormorants, which in most cases mean black. You could have a pearly cormorant, a UV cormorant, a cranberry cormorant, a red holographic cormorant. The list is endless when it comes to cormorants. Um, but I think the profile you're aiming for, if you're trying to target the fish that are on the naturals, is slim and thin as a profile. And then on the point fly then, you can either mix that up. So that could be something like a profile booby, which is a cruncher booby, if you don't know, or you just fish another cormorant. And the aim with this method is, check it out, count it down to 10 or 15, and then mix it up. So what you'll find in winter, that sometimes the slower you can retrieve cormorants, the more success you will get. But then other times it pays to check it out, leave it there, and then invoke a quick figure of eight like this, stop, let them sink. Quick figure of eight like this, stop, let them sink. And as they're sinking back through the water column, that is when you'll have a fish come in a swipe because it looks like a buzzer that's coming up and then down in the water column. So that is my approach to fishing naturals in winter. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.